Hi, I'm Jake Wells, and I'm the program director for the U.S. Domestic Program here at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. And today we're going to talk about frequently asked questions for the U.S. West. Wow. Wow, that was short. I gotta slow down. All right, Jack, let's go. All right. First question, how do I obtain a fishing license? So when you come out west, whether it's Montana, Idaho, Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, I mean, every angler is going to need um, a fishing license over a certain age. And every state's a little different. Um, you know, the easiest way really to do it now is just to go online and, and do it. It's really easy. Um, that way you have it in hand when you get to the lodge. Um, if you forget to do it online when you get to the lodge, you can do it on your phone, on your device. Uh, but it really e- is easy now to get a fishing license online. Got it. And if once I buy it, do I have to print it out and have it laminated or can it be on my phone? Nowadays, you can have it on your phone. Um, sometimes your guide uh, might ask to see a copy of it just because he needs to take down some information just for outfitting uh, purposes and, and reporting purposes. Uh, but nowadays, you can most of the time just have it on your phone um, as proof of purchase. Okay. So it's an important and sometimes confusing piece of every trip. Talk to me a little bit about recommended tips and gratuities Mm -hmm. uh, for your guides and staff. Yeah, so most of the time your gratuities are not included. Um, And depending on where you go, we'll give you more details on like the exact amounts to give your guides or staff um, in your itinerary document. So that's something that you want to look at. Um, you know, but in general, um, right now out here, you know, for a day of guided fishing, you know, 100 to $150 per guide per day, maybe a little bit more. Um, for lodges, it's anywhere from 10 to 15 plus percent. Um, the important thing to remember, though, is that guides, you know, they like cash for their gratuity. Um, so the easiest way to do that is just at the end of the day, when they drop you off at the lodge, you know, shake their hand, say, hey, thanks for the great day, and hand them their gratuity. Um, For the lodge staff, um, a lot of times you can just take care of that when you depart um, at checkout, and they can usually take care of that on a credit card for you. Got it. So what will the guides furnish or provide during my uh, vacation or time with them? Mm -hmm. Unless we tell you otherwise, you know, out here, a lot of times the guides, they're going to furnish everything for you rods, reels, the flies, the tackle. Um, So you really don't need to bring a whole lot with you. Um, Usually all you need each day when you go out fishing is just some sort of backpack or dry bag um, just to keep kind of your personal effects in, like your rain jacket, maybe an extra layer, keep your phone in, keep sunscreen in. And you can keep that bag like under your seat um, or in like a little, little cubby in the drift boat. Uh, but most of the time, the guides are going to furnish everything. You know, you can bring your favorite five weight or six weight rod with a floating line. Ninety uh, percent of the time, that's going to take care of most of the fishing situations you might find yourself in. And the guide will be happy to rig it up for you in the morning. You know, at the put in, um, tie inner flies and everything. Um, but that's pretty much all you need for each day of fishing. Well, we need waders and wading boots for these trips. So whether you need waders and wading boots kind of depends on when you're going to be coming out here. Um, I mean, most of the lodges open up for the year starting around probably mid end of April and they stay open all the way through about, you know, mid October. Um, And I would say for like the months of April, May into June, um, I mean, we're probably in waders. Um, And then after that, I mean, it just gets too hot and July, August, even into September, you know, we're just wet wading, so we're wearing just some sort of sun pants, sun shorts, sandals, tevas, chacos, what have you, and we're just wet wading just because it's too hot to be in your waders all day in the boat. Um, you know, that said, especially for those early season trips or late season trips, like once again in September or October, it is nice to have your waders um, just in case you have inclement weather. I mean, you can really ruin your day by, by getting wet. Um, I mean, I've been out on the river when it's been 80 degrees and sunny, and then in the course of 30 minutes, it's turned to, 
you know, black skies and dropped to 50 degrees and started raining. So the waders are nice to have just to kind of protect you from the elements. Um, but that's my suggestion for waders and boots. Nice. All right, where will the guides be taking their anglers? Well, uh, speaking as maybe an ex-guide myself, sometimes we don't know where we're going to take our anglers until the morning of. <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is like, you know, guides, they just work with a very dynamic, fluid, ever-changing, you know, environment. Um, so they're looking at weather, wind, you know, river flows, um, a lot of other factors as well to kind of decide where they want to take their anglers for the day. Um, of course, when you get to the lodge or you meet your guide in the morning, um, it is always a good idea to kind of express your expectations and kind of what you're looking to get out of the day. It's usually not a good idea to kind of speak up and tell the guide once you're already at the river or, or put in or at the end of the day. So they really do appreciate a heads up um, because they're not mind readers, you know. Um, but we do say, hey, you know, let the guide be the guide and, you know, come up with the best game plan for you for that day. Um, that usually works out best for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Don't guide the guide. That's what we say. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right. So on these different trips, can you expect to, uh, you know, wade fish more than float or float more than wade or does it vary? Yeah, I would say out west, I mean, a lot of the guides do like to use their drift boats as a tool um, just to cover a lot of water and get from point A to point B. It allows them to get to water that, you know, you couldn't get to on foot. Um, but then um, once the water drops um, and wading is safe, I would say that it is pretty customary to get out two, three times during the day to maybe wade for 15, 20 minutes move on to the next spot, um, wade for 15, 20 minutes, maybe do some wading, you know, while you're at your lunch spot. Um, but I would say probably a combination of both. And once again, uh, this kind of um, is related to, you know, where's the guide going to take you? Um, I would say it's also a good idea just to listen to your guide based on, you know, or what he says, um, you know, as far as wading goes. Um, sometimes it might not be safe to wade. You know, those early season trips when the water might be higher, um, safety is the number one priority for a lot of these guys, or for all guides. Um, and so they might say, ah, you know, it's not really safe to get out, so we'll be fishing from the boat mostly. Mm -hmm. um, or later into the summer when the water's dropped, there's a lot more wading options. Um, so that's something else to think about when you're trying to plan and, and book a trip. Uh, but for the most part, I would say a combination of both uh, floating, you know, and waiting throughout the course of the day. Cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I'm starting to plan where I'm going to go, uh, if I really want to wade fish for the whole time, are there places that can accommodate that? Or, or on the flip side, if I only want to float, uh, it sounds like that's an option. But really, you know, are there options, I guess, for, for an angler as they're planning? Yeah, certainly. And I think... Honestly, any river out west can lend itself well to either just floating and or just waiting. Um, of course, it depends on, once again, time of the year. Like, let's say you come out here and want to hit the salmon fly hatch, um, like on the Henry's Fork, um, mid to the latter part of May. The water's higher, so chances are you're not going to be, you know, getting out and waiting. Um, or let's say you want to hit the salmon flies on the big hole. That's sort of like second week of June or so. Once again, the water is pretty high. It's moving pretty good. So don't show up expecting that you're going to be waiting a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, versus let's say you come out like in August uh, when the water is much lower. Um, and, uh, and there's going to be a lot more waiting options. Um, of course, that's something also to let us know well ahead of time. Um, and then that way we can also pick the right spot for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's other rivers like, like the Bighorn. Um, when, once again, the water drops, um, it's very wader-friendly, um, very easy wading, um, and you can find some good opportunities to fish dry flies with caddis, mayflies, um, and, and do a lot of wading, you know, versus, let's say, the Madison, where if you've ever fished the Madison, you know, it's full of kind of those bowling ball and, and basketball-sized rocks, and it's not really the easiest to, to wade. 
Um, and so what that also kind of relates to like your ability as an angler um, and let the guide feel you out, you know, and are you physically able, you know, to wade? Because last thing anybody wants is for you to take a spill and potentially hurt yourself, mm-hmm. you know, during the day. Yeah. So if I'm doing a domestic trip out here in Montana, why use Yellow Dog for that? Well, this is our backyard. I mean, we've been here for 20 plus years. Um, and so, you know, we fish this area year round almost. Um, and I think too, with yellow dog, I mean, I'm here to shoot you straight, you know, um, and to save you a lot of time, um, a lot of money, um, from potentially picking the wrong place to go at the wrong time. Um, I think that's, people really appreciate calling and for me kind of to give them the the straight answers, you know, maybe sometimes answers they don't want to hear, <laughs> um, but I think they do appreciate, you know, hearing. Um, oftentimes when somebody calls, you know, I'll ask them more questions that they, that they have for me, just because that way I can make sure I find the right fit for what they're looking for. Um, obviously, you know, when do you want to come on out? I mean, that's like one of the first big questions I ask somebody because then that will then point me in the direction of maybe where they should go. Um, just because the list of places that, you know, I would recommend for them to go to, you know, in the month of April or May might look a lot different than, let's say, August or September. Um, and so I think just people appreciate that. And then at the end of the trip, um, hopefully my goal is for them to say to me, Jake, that was just what we were looking for. I wouldn't have, you know, been put on or found that spot if it wasn't for you. Yeah, that unbiased advice and that honest, you know, attention and answers up front, making sure yeah. they're getting to the place that's going to give them the experience they're looking for. Yeah, and hopefully too. Um, I mean, a lot of times it's folks that haven't been out here before, and they just don't know where to start. Yeah. Uh, because there's just dozens upon dozens of rivers of lodges, and, and they just don't know where to start. And and so we're our my job is to make sure it's a right fit for them, not only you know on the water with their experience fishing, but then also off the water, you know, with their lodge experience. Yep. And I think Yellow Dog's a great place to start again, because we have all these options and you can walk through each one and why one might be better than the other. Whereas if you call an outfitter, you know, they're going to sell you on their spot first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, I think that alone is just tremendously valuable. Yeah, when somebody calls, I mean, I'll be I'll be the first to tell them where they probably shouldn't go. Yeah. <laughs> um, versus, you're right. If they called the lodge direct, they might say, "Oh yeah, sure, come on out." Um, but that's that's not our that's not how we roll. <laughs> yeah. So once I book my trip, I know where I'm going. How do I get to the lodge? Mm-hmm. So a lot of the fly fishing lodges are anywhere from you know, 15 minutes to under two hours from the closest airport. Um, And usually there's a couple ways to get to your lodge. Um, Obviously, you can rent a car um, uh, or, you know, a lot of these major airports like Bozeman, Missoula, um, you know, Idaho Falls, Jackson. Um, There's also shuttle services. I mean, once you get to the lodge, I mean, yeah, a lot of times you're not going to need to leave site. Um, but sometimes it is nice to have kind of the freedom to come and go as you please. Um, maybe you might want to check out, you know, a, the local watering hole um, uh, or check out maybe a point of interest somewhere nearby. Um, but there's definitely different ways to get you to and from, you know, whatever airport you fly into and the lodge. Cool. So as I'm planning my trip, is there a minimum night's? stay that I have to have at a lodge or is there kind of a standard package or or what do you advise? For the most part, uh, most of the lodges you can arrive and depart on any day of the week. Um, You can stay, you know, however many nights and days as you please. Uh, It just depends on availability. Um, And however, one recommendation I have, um, you know, if you're coming all the way out west, you know, you want to make sure, I mean, we got a lot to see out here and a lot of, a lot of miles to, to fish. So I would say that most people that come out here to fish usually are coming out for a minimum of three days of fishing. Um, that seems, you know, kind of like the, the sweet spot for the length of a trip. Not too short, not too long, uh, but usually four nights and three days of fishing is, is pretty common. A lot of people come out for longer. Um, if you do want to come out and fish for like a whole week, um, six, seven, maybe eight days, 
Uh, one suggestion that I make, um, and a lot of people like this idea, is you can go to two different lodges out here. Um, it's really doable. Most of the lodges are going to be no, you know, no further than two or three hours apart. Um, you can fly in and out of the same airport still. You can use that kind of day in between lodges to kind of see more of the state or, or, or country. Um, and so really doable too, um, to go to two different lodges if you want to fish for maybe a week or longer. Uh, that I also like that idea because you can kind of switch it up. You get to see a new lodge, meet new people, um, you know, fish new rivers. Um, so that's one idea um, that I often share with people. Awesome. If I decide I'm interested in the U.S. West, but I don't know where I want to go, mm -hmm. walk me through the process. You know, once I contact Yellow Dog and put in touch with you, Jake, where do we go from there and how do we ultimately book the trip? Yeah, so oftentimes I like to talk to you first. Um, we can also go back and forth emails, but oftentimes I like to talk to somebody just because I have my list of questions that I'm going to ask them to help me sort of um, narrow down um, the places that I think are going to be a best fit for you. You know, when, how much, who's going to be joining you on the trip, whether it's you and your spouse, you and a buddy, maybe a big corporate group. Um, but I like to kind of ask you those questions and get those answers so that I, I can then kind of get to the point where I can put like a short list together for you of my top, you know, three, four or five places uh, for you to, to, to look at. Um, you know, we have a nice photo gallery of all the places. So you get some good color um, on the lodges, you know, the rooms, the food and beverage, uh, the property itself, the surroundings, um, the rivers. And then after I give you those, you know, four or five places based on what I think are going to be a good fit for you, I say, hey, you rank them for me, you know, one, two, three, four, um, or give me like your top pick along with a backup. Um, and then from there, I do the leg work for you. Um, I check on availability. Um, and then after that, I kind of share everything for you to review. And then once you give me the thumbs up, uh, we, book, we book it on your behalf. Um, we collect payment. We send you lots of pre-trip, you know, planning information. And then we're always just a phone call away to kind of answer any questions you might have as we get closer to the trip. Um, and then a couple weeks out from the trip, we're in touch with you again to get your, you know, um, flight information, your food and dietary restrictions or needs, um, anything else you want us to pass along to the lodge. Uh, we send you a nice customized trip itinerary, you know, with your names on it. It kind of gives you the, the day by day, you know, once you get boots on the ground out here. Um, that way, when you show up, you kind of know what to expect. Um, and then about a week out from the trip, I give you one last check-in phone call uh, to make sure you don't have any last-minute questions. Awesome. Makes it easy. Yeah. And then at the end of the trip, um, I'll check in with you again uh, just to get the post-trip report from you, get any feedback you'd like for me to share with the lodge, and uh, hopefully see some, uh, some fish photos. Yeah, those are always great. Mm -hmm. So thanks for listening today. Or thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Let me come up with a little something to Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If there's helpful info. Or... Thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, informative. And if you'd like to learn more or have any questions, always feel free to reach out. Um, you can email us at info at yellowdogflyfishing.com or just call us 406-585-8665. Uh,